guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to film a video that has been much, much, much requested for a very long time, and it is how I like to use cream products or a full face of cream makeup. So that is what I have filmed for you today. I do things a little bit differently when using cream products versus powder products. So there are a few tips along the way that I will share with y'all. And I do want to preface this video by saying there are no rules as to who should wear cream makeup, despite what marketing wants to tell you. Marketing is to make money. Let's not ever forget that. So they're gonna tell you whatever they think is gonna make them money. And you're gonna hear a lot of times, you know, people over a certain age shouldn't wear powder products. They should really stick to only creams. Creams look better on skin with fine lines and wrinkles. Powder products are the devil. Like, <laughs> I hear it all, trust me. And I do think there's a time and a place for creams, but I don't think there's necessarily an age for creams. I don't think there is any rules on when you should and shouldn't use them. It's use what you like, use what works for you. I would be lying if I said creams are best on mature skin because I am a huge lover of powder foundation and use many powder foundations on my very, very beautiful 70 and 80 year old clients while also using it on my teenagers. And it looks great on everybody, but then cream can look great on everybody too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna step off my pedestal, but I just wanted to preface this video with my opinions on that. So if you wanna see how I got this look using all cream products, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, I feel like I need to get some foundation on this face. So let's talk about the cream foundation that I'm gonna to use today. I have a lot of creams that I like. I have a lot of creams, or I have tried a lot of creams that I don't like. And honestly, just like all makeup, it's gonna be subjective what you like and you don't like. The one I'm gonna to use today, I love, hence the reason I'm using it today. I love the Lancome Stick Foundations, one of my very favorite foundations of all time, probably my top two. And the one I'm gonna to use today is from Kier Weiss. I have used this in videos before, and this is probably either my second or third compact. This is in the shade Illusion, and just like with other foundations, there's lots of different ways to apply them. If you want a more sheer look, then definitely a sponge is gonna be a great way to use this. I like to use a brush, not only because I'm a brush girl in general, like that's just how I prefer to apply the majority of my foundations, but also I just like the way it applies with a brush. I'm gonna use my IT Cosmetics Heavenly Lux Complexion Perfection Brush. Now, sometimes you will find creams, especially in compact forms, need a little bit of warming up to get soft enough to feel like you get an even distribution across your face. Not necessarily the case with this one, but if you wanted to apply it with your fingers, you definitely could, and the heat from your skin is going to warm up the cream a little bit and make it a little bit more emollient on your skin. But to me, I don't find the finished effect to be that much different with this particular one being warmed up versus not. If you also want to shear it out, you can add a drop of oil into the compact itself. I'm gonna start just by lightly stippling it in. So you can, again, add a drop of oil into the compact itself, then mix it around with your fingers or a brush or a sponge, but I like just using it straight from the compact. And with the majority of my foundations, I do prefer to stipple it in like this. I do like to go in probably even more layers when I'm working with cream foundations versus liquid because I find that there is a very thin line between the perfect amount and too much, at least on my skin. So I really like to go in very thin layers and build it up where needed, which on me is, you know, always typically right around here where I have the most redness. This foundation is probably one of the most skin-like foundations in my entire collection, whether we're talking powder, cream, or liquid. If you work in those thin layers, you are really gonna find that it evens the skin tone, but absolutely does not look like makeup on the skin. And again, that is a pro in a lot of cream foundations, but can also be something that doesn't happen. Some can look too much, even working in thin layers. I don't find that to be the case in this. This is a nice medium coverage foundation. 
You might be able to build it up to full, but I don't know that you'll want to, to obtain the skin-like finish that I'm talking about. It's a beautiful, natural finish. It does not provide a ton of dew or excess luminosity. To me, this is my perfect finish. This is what I look for in a favorite foundation. I'll do a close up once I have finished the whole face, but I, I think you can see there's not much difference in the finish. It's just a very pretty, again, evening of the skin tone. So as you can see, it just adheres with the skin so nicely, lays down looking like nothing is on your skin, just good, fresh, healthy skin. Definitely not too emollient, not too luminous, not noticeable at all, in my opinion. Now, if you also noticed, I almost always start out with applying a corrector. Now, when I am doing an all cream look, I kind of like to become a little bit of a mixologist because it's fun and easier to mix creams than it is powders. And it can also dial down the amount of steps that you're doing. So I am actually going to mix a cream corrector or illuminator for the under eyes with a cream concealer and do it as one step. You're gonna see that not only does it take down a step, you use less product that way. And while creams are beautiful on the skin, sometimes when you layer them, especially under the eyes, you can use more product than you think you're using, and then it becomes too much. It's a little too emollient. It sinks into your creases way too fast. It cakes up way too fast. So I find when you mix the products together, you use less product, but you get the same result. Now, not everyone needs a corrector. I am someone who does. If you don't, then just go in with the cream concealer and you're good to go. I'm going to be using the Beauty Pie Super Luminous Under Eye Genius Corrector in light to medium. So you can see it is a cream corrector and the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer, which is also cream. So I'm gonna take a little spatula, remove a tiny bit of product of each, and put it on a little palette. Y'all can use your hands. I mean, you don't have to have all this stuff. I'm really doing equal parts, so I'm not putting more concealer than corrector. I'm doing just as much of each. And the concealer is in 2NO Cream. It's that amount on my palette. I'm gonna mix it together and I am going to apply this with a brush. Another tip where I find you put the right amount on and nothing more, nothing less, is to use a brush versus fingers or even a sponge. I just prefer a brush under the eyes. Again, I'm someone who just loves brushes. So that's what I'm gonna use. But if I were to pick this up with my, my finger and pat it in, I honestly feel like I use too much. So I'm just gonna take my Beauty Pie, not Beauty Pie, BK Beauty 206 brush, pick up a little bit of the product, and then just start stippling it where my darkness is the worst, right there in that corner. And then I'm gonna turn the brush around and start blending it out. I may go back in and use the rest of that product, but I'm using the empty side of the brush right now. Okay, and then I'll just blend some of the side that still has some product all the way up to kind of lift the eye. So I've got the coverage that I want. So you can definitely see the difference in the darkness of this eye and this eye, but I don't have an excess amount of product, which again, when working with creams, I feel like that is the biggest mistake and what can happen very easily. And this is just a way to help make sure that doesn't happen. The luminosity from that Beauty Pie product is coming through. I am gonna powder my under eyes. I know this is supposedly a full cream, but this is really how I do cream makeup. And I do still use some powder and under eyes is definitely a place where I always use powder. Myself, I personally feel like I need it. Whether the concealer says it's self-setting or not, it inevitably always ends up in my creases, no matter how little or how much I use. And finding the right formula, in my opinion, is more the trick than just finding a concealer you don't have to set. And I love using my Ilia Soft Focus Loose Powder to set my under eyes, and so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do it very lightly. You don't need much powder under your eyes to get the effect of setting the concealer, and especially when you're working with creams, if you use a little bit too much powder, it almost becomes like a paste. Don't want that at all. So I'm just going to lightly set the under eyes with this Ilia powder. That way I can ensure that everything is going to last all day without creasing or cracking. 
And I will show you, I only used half the amount of concealer and corrector that I put onto the palette. Again, I find that that is a better way to kind of determine how much you need putting it on a palette versus taking it straight from the stick because sometimes if you put too much, it's harder to take off than it is to add layers. Let's talk about bronzers. I do have two favorite cream bronzers. I've tried a lot of bronzers in the past that I love. Cream and liquid, when we're just talking creams, probably my top two are the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. I have the shade Medium Bronze and the Clinique Contour Stick, but really this is more of a bronzer in my opinion as far as the shade goes. And I just like how it's very easy. You can stripe it on the face and then blend out if you want. I prefer to go straight in with a brush and then proceed to blend out. And this is the one I'm gonna use today. So the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Brush is one of my favorite brushes to use cream bronzer with. The reason is the density is just right. It's not so fluffy to where you're not gonna actually be able to lay the pigment down on the face, but it's not so dense where you can't use it to also blend out the product. And also the shape of it, being an angled top like that makes it very easy to press the bronzer onto your cheeks and not get it where you don't want it. So I'm gonna take this and go directly into the stick. Again, you can draw stripes and blend out. I just feel like this is an easier way to make sure you don't, again, apply too much. So I'm just gonna put it where I always put bronzer and that is the top of my hairline down to my temples. See how easy that just blends out? This brush and the product together are just a dream duo. I have also worked with a lot of cream bronzers that are beautiful when you first apply it, but then you go on about your day and by the time you're done with the day or even halfway through, it patches off real bad on the top. I know the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer did that to me very badly. I did not like that cream bronzer. I know so many people love it, but it was probably the patchiest bronzer in cream form that I had ever used. This one does not do that. I'm gonna take just a little bit. I'm kind of going on the top of my cheekbone. I'm not wanting this as a contour. If I was, I would be using this edge and I would go along. I'm really wanting it to be a bronzer, a little bit more blown out. Now this looks crazy. I'm gonna show you how to fix it. But I did want to mention where I like to place my cream bronzers and even a little bit like on the cheeks. But again, that looks a little crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same brush that I had my foundation on. I'm not adding any more foundation. I'm just taking it and kind of stippling around the edges of that bronzer to blend it out some. Make it look a little bit more cohesive with the face. And if you want, you can take a little bit on your jawline. I don't typically care to contour or bronze my jaw, but I will put a little bit just for the sake of the video. So let's talk about another mixology trick I like to do when it comes to cream products. And that is mixing a cream highlight with a cream blush. There's a couple reasons I do this. Again, one less step. The main reason is that you can see when you start adding creams on top of creams, you get more luminous as the look goes on. I don't need a ton of extra luminosity. I mean, right now you can already see, like it's a built-in highlight when you start putting emollient products on top of each other. But I still like a little bit of a gleam that a cream highlighter can give. I love a cream highlighter. Honestly, the more I add to my collection and the more I play with the things that I have, I find that I much prefer a cream highlighter these days over a powder. I still have some favorite powders, but creams are just easy, they look great. If I'm ever gonna have some texture on my skin, it's always on the top of my cheekbones. Powders tend to emphasize that a little bit more than creams. One of my favorite creams is from Era Perez, and this is their Vanilla Highlighter in the shade Falling Star. It is so pretty. You can see, hopefully, just the beautiful sheen that it has, but has absolutely no sparkle. No sparkle whatsoever. I'm not really into putting glitter on my face in any capacity. So I look for cream highlighters that just have that beautiful sheen, and this is definitely one of them. Now I like to mix that with my blush, and there I have so many favorite cream blushes. I honestly can't decide which one I wanna mix it with today. It's either gonna be the Beauty Pie Blush in Fresh Face, which is this beautiful pop of coral, because I'm doing more like copper on the eyes, or the Westman Atelier in Mimi 
which is a very like neutral bronzy rose shade. I think I'm actually going to do the Beauty Pie because I feel like if I use that Mimi, it's just going to be too much bronze because I'm already, I've already got some bronze going with the Clinique stick. So I'm going to take, again, same spatula, a little bit of the cream blush. And this time I'm not doing equal parts. I am going to put less highlighter than I do blush. Probably a quarter of the amount that I put blush because again, I'm already dewy. I just want a little bit of that sheen. Now, if you're someone who's like, I love the way this ends up looking, but I don't want to go through all those steps, I would just find a more illuminating cream blush. I don't know if Beauty Pie still has this one. It was limited edition, but I will link it if they do. And this is called Gleam Me Up. And you can see, it's basically what I am doing with the other two products. So you can find something that gives you the same effect. I just like playing with makeup. The Royal and Langnickel Omnia BOM 185 brush is my favorite for cream blush. It is technically, I believe, a foundation brush, but I love the size of it. I love the density of it. Picks up and lays down product exactly like I want it to. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that product on the brush. Start on the upper cheekbones even higher than I put the bronzer and just stipple that in. I tend to go down a little farther with cream blush than I do powder blush. I don't really know why, but I do. So I am. So again, that adding that highlighter in is just giving a little bit of luminosity, but I don't need much. And it's adding that really pretty pop of coral color to the cheeks. But I'm a little shiny. And again, this is how I do cream makeup. I do use a little bit of powder. If you're someone who really likes to look dewy, skip the powder. There are no rules. This is just how I do it. Now I do like to be a little strategic in what powder I choose. I don't really want to go for something that's super mattifying because again, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of what we usually tend to go for when we're using all creams. I don't want something that you need a lot of product to get the intended result. I want something that's going to sink in, look a little skin-like, doesn't need much product. I'm going to be using the Uoma Hydro Blast Finishing Powder. This is one of those powders that feels like literal water going on your face. And I find that it works really well with cream products. Now, when I first used this in a playing with new makeup video, someone mentioned that, and I can't remember who, I'm sorry, if you're that person, leave a comment down below. But someone said that this powder really works the best using a puff. So I got out a puff. This is the old Tati Beauty puff I got years ago. I got out that and I'm just going to put a little bit on the end. And again, I'm going to be strategic about where I place this. What's the point of putting all that powder right there to even halfway mattify what I'm attempting to do on my cheeks? I'm really just want to put it on the nose and right on the outside of the nose, on the chin, a little bit on the middle of my forehead, just a little bit right down here. Again, I'm not going up here where I want all that pretty luminosity. And whoever, please, whoever told me to do this, leave a comment so I can thank you because this powder does work the best with a puff. It leaves all that beautiful glow on the cheeks, but it takes my skin from looking oily to healthy. A final tip for face cream makeup before we move on to the eyes is to use the setting spray. I am not someone who typically uses the setting spray all that often. I'm more into hydration sprays. However, because I didn't use powder all over, because these are creams, they tend to be more emollient and maybe don't last as long, I find using a setting spray to kind of seal it all in really helps. My favorite setting spray is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury. I have two of these in my empties from my kit. It's really the only setting spray I use in my kit. I love it. So I'm going to lightly set all of that into the skin. I'm doing this before I do the eyes to give it time to work on the face makeup, but also setting your face makeup right after you do mascara is asking for trouble. So if I do it here, I don't forget to do it and I don't ruin my mascara and in effect, my entire makeup. 
So let's talk about eyes. Eyes are very simple for me on a daily basis. They're even simpler when I use creams. They're fast, don't need a lot of blending. That's the beauty of creams. Today, I'm gonna to use the Glow Skin Beauty Stick in Canyon in my crease, and then I'll use a compact cream on the lid. This is a beautiful terracotta matte shade. Now, if you are using a stick like this in your crease, you might want to have a brush on hand to kind of blend it out. I don't typically need a brush to blend it out when I'm using mattes on the lid or even you know shimmers, any kind of stick on the lid, but I do find blending it out in the crease helps. And it just ends up being this beautiful, very easily applied, you saw how quick that was, shade in the crease. And I did have someone ask, I think it was in my glow skin video last week, if I find that creams don't blend well once I've already set my eyes, not set, prime my eyes, because I do use the NARS Soft Matte Concealer and then I put a powder down every day before I do my eyeshadow because I have a little bit of discoloration that needs to be toned down. I don't find it affects it at all. Um, I use a very light dusting of powder and I've never had a cream not blend well over that priming step. And I also don't find that blending a cream over that step affects the primer. Like I don't find it lifts the concealer or anything like that. I'm just continuing to blend, easy peasy. Then I am using my Rowan Beauty eyeshadow palette in Eyes On Me. And this is a beautiful palette that contains two powders and two creams. I'm only gonna use the creams in this video, but I just wanted to show you a different option that you can have with creams. I also love the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. Those are beautiful. I have many colors, but it just gives you options. You can have creams in a stick form, you can have them in a compact form, you can have them in a pot form, lots of different options. I'm gonna take that same brush. This is an old Morphe brush, but it's basically any kind of synthetic, little bit of a denser eye brush is my favorite. Synthetics, in my opinion, work best with creams. I'm gonna take this darker copper shade and tap that onto the lid. If you have blue eyes, these shades are beautiful. I mean, they're beautiful on any eyes. The copper color really makes the blue pop. Then I'm gonna turn the brush around and go in with this more creamy gold shade champagne shade and i'm going to top that copper right in the middle to give it a little bit of contrast there is a finish that creams provide on the eyes that you will not find anywhere else not in any powder shadow they're beautiful sometimes they don't last as long as a powder eyeshadow would i find that maybe the ones in the pots and the compacts last a little bit less than the stick shadows which tend to be bulletproof on me. I don't really have issues though with this formula as far as lasting goes. And it's just, it's so easy. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of that stick shadow in Canyon with that same brush. Notice I have used one brush and I'm going to take a little bit under my eyes. I'm gonna do mascara real quick and we will come back to finish off with lips. Another tip that I have when working with cream eyeshadows is to choose a mascara that you don't find smudges at all. My biggest recommendation would be to use a tubing mascara that you like on your lashes. My daughter stole the only tubing mascara that I had open at the moment, but I used my Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara because this one absolutely does not smudge on me at all, even though it's not waterproof or tubing. The cream products are emollient, again, so they could rub in with your lashes, especially if you have longer ones that tend to touch your eyelids and cause smudging to occur when it usually wouldn't. So that's a tip for mascara. Now I'm going to use lipstick and honestly, any cream blush that you use, you could use this lipstick. It's really gonna pull the whole look together. If my lips were not giving me so many issues right now, I would totally use the Beauty Pie and Illuminator mixed together. It would be beautiful on the lips. And again, it would be very monochromatic and pull the look together. But my lips are giving me issues. 
I should probably just use a gloss, but I am going to try the brand new Color Lux lipsticks from Jane Ardell. I'm going to try the one in Toffee. That is a little bit lighter than I thought it would be. And it could be just because my lips are so dry right now. I am going to top it off with the Rowan Gloss and Remy. That's it. That is the final look using all cream products. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you picked up some tips along the way. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.